Okay, now that we've finished the suction side, we're going to go on to the pressure side. This is stage two. So we're going to move this on a little bit of an angle so to make it a little easier for you to see what I'm doing. First thing we need is the reducer bushing. Now one thing I want you to remember is that you could test fit everything first, see how it looks, make sure everything lines up, and then you can take it apart in reverse step, and then put it back together with the, the tape or dope, whatever you use. Okay, after you've got the reducer bushing in, take the five inch closed nipple. The next thing you're gonna put on is one of the T's. The first one goes on so that it's sideways. Okay. Now that that's on, you make sure that this hole faces out from the pump. Get a closed nipple. Attach the second T by the end of it. So that faces up matching up with the other one. Now we're going to add another nipple. And the solenoid. This is what controls the flow to your boom. You'll note that it has one large hole here and a hole that you can actually see through. This is the side that goes on to the pipe nipple. Either one of this, these. We want this hole to face us when we assemble it. Like so. Now we need a reducer bushing for this side. You may be wondering why I'm not using a plug. Reason being is we're going to put a sediment faucet on here so that if you want to use a hand spray, you can, as well as use the boom. No critical position for this, whatever you're comfortable with. If you want it facing the back or down more or straight out, it's entirely up to yourself. Now, so we can attach the hose that runs down to your boom. We need to add a quick coupler to the front side. not actually a quick coupler, it's called a cam lock. Just so we don't lose the other half of it, we can attach it. So that we know where it is all the time. Now, <clears throat> what we need to do now is to add ball valve. The ball valve is actually what controls your pressure. So we put in uh, another closed nipple on this side, like so. The hose barb at the top of the ball valve, this is for the line that run, is the return back to your tank. Now we can add the other reducer bushing and the gauge. So you can adjust your pressure accordingly to your spray, to your speed, so on and so forth. Okay, now that you've completely assembled your plumbing for your suction and your pressure side, your unit should look like this. 
After this, we are going on to a couple other parts that still have to be done yet. Okay, now that we have your pump assembled, suction, and your outlet side, there's uh, another thing you have to do is to the tank that you supply is drill a few holes and add a few parts. So in the kit, you're gonna find any vortex bulkhead. You drill a hole to attach this to the bottom of your tank. You need a hole saw to slide over this. Drill your hole in the tank, attach that. Then the hose barb for your suction. After everything's in the tank, attach that. As well as the suction, we have to take care of the return side. So you need the hole saw for this one as well. And they should be about the same size. Now, this sits on the top of the tank near the front. Attach the hose barb. Then you attach another hose barb to the bottom. So it ends up looking like this. Now, for the return, we want a little bit of agitation, but we can't add anything really small to give you a powerful agitation. So we take a T, we add another hose barb to the top center of it. Then we add the two street L's. So you'll end up with a configuration looking like this. Now you can angle these up a little bit, one down a little bit, may help stir up your product. Now the hoses you see laying here, the large one is wire reinforced. That's for the suction side. And the smaller one here, the one inch, is the return from the pump to the tank and also the hose that drops inside the tank to attach these two pieces together. And you have the assortment of clamps that are used for the suction, the return, and also your boom.